hello everyone and uh, welcome to edutap guys uh, good evening lokesh hello siddharth uh, hello tom guys i have muted you uh, but uh, i can still see you you are live so guys uh, welcome to this session of rbi assistant and this is the first session for your preparation of your rbi phase 1 exam and today the topic uh, will be taking is uh, subject verb agreement right so um, i hope you are ready with your pens and notebooks let's wait for um, good evening siddharth uh, hello dear so guys let's let's wait for let's wait for uh, other students to join in uh, good evening niranjan uh, welcome to the session dear all right so i think uh, yes i think we are live all right guys let's uh, let's begin the session uh, are you ready with your pens and notebooks just give me a thumbs up in the chat box all right uttam uh, i think uttam is ready how about siddharth nekta lokesh and uh, what about my uh, dear fellow aspirants who are there live on the youtube niranjan is there uh, he is ready uh, dia is ready all right guys so i think we are good to go all right guys perfect perfect all right so let me just share my screen with you and i'll uh, I'll, i'll start explaining the the topic to you and then uh, uh, first we'll start with the concepts then we'll take up uh, some examples as we go along and after that Uh, i'll be giving you some questions to discuss right now right here and uh, you'll be solving those questions with me right so do make sure that you have your pens and notebooks with you so that you are able to put down whatever important concepts that we learn here today right so let me just share my screen with you guys all right so here we are guys all right i hope you can see me right all right so let's begin guys so this is the first session uh, for your rbi assistant 2022 and this is a live practice class where we'll be discussing uh, uh, we'll be taking up one on one queries and we'll be discussing the insights of this topic which which are very very important so guys uh, how do you want me to communicate with you do you want me to be uh, do you want me to use only english or do you want me to uh do you want me to be bilingual yes guys absolutely gorav why not uh, you can uh, you know see in 30 days the world goes around 30 times right and you have uh, all the opportunities in the world to crack this exam you just need to start preparing you know step by step in a systematic manner you should uh, have a systematic approach you should have a routine schedule every day how many hours you are going to uh, you know uh, how many are hours you are going to assign to one particular subject every day so it's really really important that you put in the effort if you have the strength definitely you can crack this exam and in at least in english you will be able to score really good marks right only english all right niranjan uh, students you want me to uh, communicate in english is everyone okay with that i hope everyone is okay because obviously we are learning english and uh, you should be uh, you know discussing everything in english actually uh, by, okay let me just see who wants to be bilingual sitanshu says bilingual okay uttam also says bilingual other than that uh, rest of you anything is fine sir in these sessions grammar concepts will be covered comprehensively or no 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 uh, it will be covered topic wise purvi and uh, through these topics we'll be covering the whole grammar you will see today what we are going to learn okay all right dear so uh, let me just start with the concept and then uh, let me put down the basics to you first all right is it the first class yes rohit uh, rohit it's the first class and uh, let's uh, i'll try to be bilingual for everyone uh, i'll try to explain the concepts and then i'll try to uh, you know use as much english as i can and uh, the rest <clears throat> uh, let's see how we can uh, you know how we can fare ahead so guys um, so first of all 
uh, before we begin the uh, the concepts of the of the lecture right uh, i want you to understand what this topic entails right what subject verb agreement basically means right although you can understand uh, we have already discussed that uh, you know the name itself suggests that this is subject verb agreement right but subject verb agreement in itself is a very uh, crucial topic reason being guys please make note of this that uh, you know more than 40% of the questions that are based on grammar are directly or indirectly dependent on subject verb agreement now if you understand that that will make it very easy for uh, you know for you to comprehend the uh, this topic and the importance of this topic is uh, you know you have never been top, uh, taught this topic separately uh, since you were kids in your school so this is what we need to work upon today so uh, you know that you know the rule that is given to you uh, on the screen a singular subject takes a singular verb whereas a plural subject takes a plural verb it's very easy to say but before we begin we need to understand how to identify subjects in a sentence and uh, then how to decide the verb so I'll, i'll start with the very basics guys very basics of the language whenever we write a sentence 99% of the times we follow this sequence we begin the sentence with the subject of the sentence followed by a helping verb after that we use the action verb and followed by object now why am i saying 99% there are certain other uh, you know structure of sentences that we can follow for example in interrogative sentences we start with a helping verb or a w series uh, word like why are you doing this right or is she gone so interrogative sentences they have a separate structure right uh, other than that demonstrative sentences for example it is a beautiful day what a lovely painting uh this is my bag so these are demonstrative sentences and uh, your uh, sentences where we use ex sign of exclamation but these sentences uh, you obviously know they stand out but we are talking about the sentences that you are going to face in the exam so the questions you are going to face in the exams 99% of them would be put down in this sequence subject plus helping verb plus action verb and then object i'll give an example whenever we make a sentence do we say uh, 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 writing Re uh, writing rena is a novel no novel writing rena is a no uh, novel rena writing is no so basically we have been taught a structure since we were kids which is we start with the subject rena is followed by helping verb followed by action verb rena is writing a novel now guys once you understand this now before we uh, you know move further i would like to discuss with you what subject is what helping verbs are what action verbs are and what objects are unless you understand the the basics of your grammar it would be impossible for you to brush up on your grammar at this point of time right so guys what is the subject subject we have been basically taught that subject is the doer of the action right when we since we were kids we have been taught that subject is the doer of the action that is absolutely wrong guys uh, because that was you know that will be contradicted you know i'll i'm writing another sentence in front of you a novel is being written by rena i'll i'm i'm starting with the very basics of the grammar so that you are able easily able to uh, comprehend it now look at the second sentence a novel is being written by rena now the doer of the action is rena here right but Uh, do you think rena is the subject of the sentence no guys rena is not the subject of the sentence now the subject of the sentence now is novel so in the first sentence the subject was rena but in the second uh, sentence rena is not the subject subject is a novel so guys basically how do you identify the subject now guys there is a simple trick that we uh, basically follow is that subject is not the doer of the action but subject is the owner of the sentence what i mean to say is whenever you look at a sentence you have to figure out which noun or pronoun or which word is the owner of the sentence and what do i mean by owner of the sentence 
सेंटेंस किसके लिए बनाया गया है सेंटेंस किसके लिए ओरिजिनेट हुआ है किसके लिए बोला गया है उसे बोला जाता है सेंटेंस का सब्जेक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल रीना इज राइटिंग अ नॉवल शी मे बी द डूअर ऑफ द एक्शन शी मे नॉट बी द डूअर ऑफ द एक्शन अगर मैं बोलता हूँ रीना इज अ स्मार्ट गर्ल अब इस सेंटेंस में तो कोई एक्शन नहीं हो रहा Now in this sentence, Rina is a smart girl. There is no action going on. So, guys, how would you identify? Now, India is a great country. How would you identify? India is the subject. So, guys, that is what I was telling you. It is not compulsory that every sentence has an action in it, but subject every sentence will definitely have, right? So, subject is not the doer of the action. Subject is the owner of the sentence. Basically, sentence. Uh, You know, sentence जिसके लिए बनाया जाता है सेंटेंस जिसके लिए ओरिजिनेट होता है सेंटेंस फॉर हुम द सेंटेंस हैज बीन मेड फॉर और हैज बीन ओरिजिनेटेड फॉर दैट इज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ अ सेंटेंस राइट सो सब्जेक्ट इज नॉट द डूअर इट इज द ऑनर ऑफ द सेंटेंस सो इन सेंटेंस नंबर वन सेंटेंस वॉज बेसिकली फॉर्म फॉर रीना रीना वॉज राइटिंग अ नॉवल सो रीना इज राइटिंग अ नॉवल सो वी हैव मेड द सेंटेंस फॉर रीना सो रीना इज द सब्जेक्ट एंड इन द सेकेंड सेंटेंस although the action is done by reena but the subject is not reena subject is the novel right so subject is the owner of the sentence now the subject is followed by a helping verb you know what helping verbs are right is am are was were has have had has been have been had been is being was being uh, you know so these words that we use to connect the subject with the verb and to Uh, clarify the tense of the sentence now why do we use helping verbs guys helping verbs are basically used to uh, to elaborate the tense of the sentence right which tense are we referring to if i'm using is that means it shows that i'm referring to a present tense if i had written rina was then it would have referred to a past tense right and if i had written will be it would have been referring to future tense right very good sitanshu active passive i have done that but see active passive still in every sentence be it active or be it passive every sentence will definitely have a subject and subject is again not the doer subject is the owner of the sentence got it so basically subject is the owner of the sentence after that it is followed by a helping verb followed by action verb now what are we what do we call action verb now the name itself clarifies that the you know the verb the word that indicates an action that is going on be it a physical action or a non physical action now guys there are two types of actions physical and non physical for example writing writing is a physical action right but thinking thinking is not a physical action it's a mental action right uh, for example believe uh, i believe you so believe is not a physical action it is a mental action right so but still they are both considered action verbs so they are put down in the category of verbs right so a subject is followed by helping verb then by action verb and then by object now what is an object now you should also understand what object basically means object is the uh, word that adds information or necessary information to the sentence that is what we call object you see if i had written only rena is writing now if i had not written a novel we, you still would have understood and the sentence would not have been wrong rena is writing or rena is sleeping but if i say rena is writing a novel a novel has added information to the sentence that what is she writing she is writing a novel if i had said rena is sleeping on a bed now on a bed would be the object that is adding additional information to the sentence that where is she sleeping on the bed if i had said rena is sleeping in her room or rena is cooking food so food in her room on the bed now these are objects right so you must understand what is the purpose of an object it is used to uh, used to add additional information to the sentence so that is what we call a structure of a sentence subject helping verb action verb and then it is finished by an object now guys every sentence is uh, you know the question rises sir uh, does every sentence need an object no for example if i say she is sleeping that sentence is absolutely correct but why do we use object to add additional information into it got the point now guys why am i explaining this to you guys i will ask you to figure out the subject in a sentence now the verbs that you know the rules that we'll be following after this we will be discussing and we will be locating the subject of the sentence so that we are able to find out the relevant verb so now i can begin with the with the topic now 
which is called subject verb agreement now guys what does agreement mean subject verb agreement kya hota hai guys एग्रीमेंट का मतलब क्या होता है नाउ वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एग्रीमेंट मींस एग्रीमेंट इज समझौता राइट वेयर देयर आर टू पार्टीज वेयर व्हिच कम टुगेदर एंड दे सेटल डाउन राइट ऑन सम एग्रीमेंट सो दिस इज द टॉपिक सब्जेक्ट वर्ब एग्रीमेंट एंड व्हाट इज द एग्रीमेंट दैट हैज बीन डिसाइडेड बिटवीन द टू नाउ देयर इज अ सिंपल रूल दैट यू ऑलवेज नीड टू रिमेंबर फॉर सब्जेक्ट वर्ब एग्रीमेंट एंड द रूल इज गिवन इन द ऑन द स्क्रीन व्हिच इज अ सिंगुलर सब्जेक्ट टेक्स अ सिंगुलर वर्ब वेयर एज अ प्लूरल सब्जेक्ट always takes a plural verb for example he has given some example singular like she bill or car will take she is bill goes or car shines whereas plural subjects will take plural verbs you know if i had written instead of she if i had written we then the verb would have been are if instead of bill I, if if i if i had written boys then it should have been go and instead of car if i had written cars right then it would have been shine so guys this is what you need to understand that whichever the subject is it will always take a verb in its accordance so a singular subject will always take a singular verb whereas a plural subject always takes a plural verb and there has been one example that has been given to you and the example is the list of items is or are on the desk now the question is guys now i want all of you to answer this question exactly satan should to agree with us respective subject so guys i want you to answer this question the list of items is on the desk or the list of items are on the desk yes guys now first of all identify the subject uh, what is the subject of the sentence is it the items or is it the list now guys i want every one of you to participate now let's make this session receptive and let's see uh, if we are able to solve these questions what is the Uh, yes guys what is the subject in this example the list of items now guys usually what what happens is we look at the noun which is closest to the verb right if usually if you know randomly if i was speaking the sentence right i i may probably have said the list of items are on the table because you know i only remember the word items which is closer to the verb but this is how he confuses you in the exam so this is a very common type of mistake that students make Uh, that they do not look for subject in a sentence guys if you believe me now please note it down if you get into the habit of locating subject every time right so guys i am repeating it again if you get into the habit of locating the subject every time you will reduce the mistakes that you make in your uh, grammar section by 50% now listen to me carefully if you follow this rule if you start locating subjects in a sentence you will remove 50% of the mistakes how do i say so see the topics the questions that you face in the exam subject verb agreement is based on this rule uh, questions that are based on nouns are based on this rule then tenses questions based on tenses are based on these uh, these rules then conditional sentences the questions based on conditional sentences are based on these rules so in this topic you will be covering the basics of the next uh, or upcoming four topics of the future so guys subject verb agreement is a very important topic and that is why i have chosen it for the first time today it is a first class and this will improve the basics so very well done guys all of you have uh, actually understood the subject of this sentence no praveen it should be yes is not are so the subject or in this sentence is not the items the subject is list so this is the subject here and list being singular it will take a singular verb so the correct answer here should have been is right so if i say Uh, let me let me put another example to you guys now listen to this carefully and i want all of you to answer me right the uh, disagreement between the uh, countries of europe oh, okay let's say let, let, let me put it this way the disagreement between the countries has resulted in a war or have resulted in a war yes guys the disagreement between the countries has resulted in a war or have resulted in a war very good nikta very good purvi Shantanu, Tam, Aditi, Siddharth, very well done. Daina, very well done, guys. Why? Very good, Indu. See, we identify the subject, and the subject here is not the countries, but the disagreement. So 
if you get into the habit of you know highlighting the subject every time you read a sentence you will reduce your mistakes by 50% and i can guarantee you that and i myself practice it still today even after so much experience i still use this rule in the back of my head whenever whenever i'm reading something i always follow this that i should definitely check the subject and the verb because the first half of the sentence is always based on subject verb agreement and all the topics related to, related to it and you know they work around it right so we will discuss these questions but i hope you have understood what the basics of this topic is so what you have learned up till now number 1 get into the habit of uh, identifying subject every time you read a sentence it will reduce your 50% mistakes second thing is the basic rule of subject verb agreement is singular subject will always take a singular verb whereas a plural subject will always take a plural verb so guys this was the basic of this topic that is what you need to understand now uh, why am i reminding this to you now we have always been taught the same thing but not in a uh, in a in a defined way but in a very random or in a very ambiguous way now we have been following this rule but you know where he will make the questions from the exceptions that we are going to discuss further but to to learn the exceptions we need to understand we need to be well versed with the the basics first so we have been following this rule since we were kids but the point is we need to you know understand this consciously for example the computer is a great machine or are a great machine we know sir computer is a great machine india is a great country are a great country india is a great country but on the other hand if i say machines is very helpful or are very helpful now we say machines are very helpful why because sir machines are plural indians are humble people or indians are uh, indians is humble people indians are humble people right so that is what i wanted to uh, show you that we have been following this rule subconsciously but now we have to do it consciously and he will try to confuse you in certain rules that we are going to discuss further right so guys uh i hope you have understood the basics of this topic now let's begin with the criticalities of the topic ab hum karne wale hain guys kuch bahut important rules theek hai i'll be discussing some 12 rules of subject verb agreement that will really help you to get control over this topic kyun question jo banayega na wo in 12 rules mein se banayega kahin na kahin inhi ke beech mein wo confuse karne ki koshish karega so i'll try to explain the concept behind the rule and then we will practice some examples and then we will practice questions based on this topic so guys make sure that you have your pens and papers with you and uh, make sure that you uh, you know you note down you make your own notes so that you can revise them over the period of time right so let's begin guys let's start with rule number 1 i think uh, if uh, some of you were there in the workshop yesterday i also explained this uh, rule in the workshop that we took yesterday on zoom so the first rule here it goes guys two subjects joined by and take a plural verb now guys we obviously know that why rohan and reena now the point is rohan and reena uh is or are playing the question or oh, okay rohan and reena has or have left the point is now we understand why are we using a plural verb here or why do we need to use a plural verb here rohan and reena the answer should be have left but why rohan is also singular reena is also singular but we know that we are talking about two subjects now so what the uh, rule basically entails here is there is only one and only one conjunction in english language which has the ability to make two nouns the subjects of a sentence and that conjunction is only and the point is guys if you understand that the only conjunction the only conjunction in english language that has the ability to you know join two subjects or two words and make both the uh, both the nouns subjects of the sentence the only conjunction that has that ability is and so can you remember this but there will be exceptions on this rule but you know two subjects joined by and usually take a plural verb the example is the doctor and nurse yes guys han ji work together or works together now guys this sentence is actually wrong it should have been the doctor and the nurse because we are talking about two different persons so the doctor and the nurse is working or are or so let's say I'll let let me put it to you this way 
Yes, guys, I want you to answer this uh, question. The doctor and the nurse is helping the patient or are helping the patient. Now, we obviously know when we are referring to two nouns, there are two different bodies. They are uh, joined uh, with and. So the verb here should be are, right? So the doctor and the nurse are helping the patient. So guys, always remember the two nouns joined by and uh, usually take a plural verb, right? So this is not something that you uh, should, you know, you are not aware of. But, but I still wanted you to remember this, that there is only one conjunction that has the ability to make two nouns subject of a sentence and the conjunction is and. Can you remember this? I'll give you a few examples. Uh, Russia and China is or are developing a new um, uh, satellite. So Russia and China, we know that we are talking about two different countries. So it should be are developing a new satellite, right? Uh, the prime minister and the uh, the cabinet ministers has or have left the meeting room. Yes, guys, what should be the correct answer here? The prime minister and the cabinet ministers has left the meeting room or have left the meeting room. So, guys, I want all of you to uh, answer this. I want you to participate. Exactly. The correct answer should be have. So the doctor and the nurse Oh, sorry, uh, so the sentence that is given to you, the doctor and the nurse, why is it taking a plural verb? Because there are two subjects, right? I hope this is clear to you. Now, guys, this is what I wanted to show you. Now, please remember this now. This is very, very important. Very good, Balaji. Now, guys, this is the rule that you need to focus on. If two subjects express one idea, now there is a, a possibility that two subjects joined by and, but they still present a singular idea. Now, if that's the scenario, we have to use a singular verb. For example, now, we just read rule number one, the two nouns joined by and take a plural verb, but bread and butter is a wholesome food or are a wholesome food. Bread and butter is a healthy breakfast or are a healthy breakfast. Now, guys, bread and butter, when put together, right, it conveys one idea. For example, if I say Mahindra and Mahindra, Right. Mahindra and Mahindra is an Indian company or are an Indian company? Anji guys, Jack and Jones or uh, let's say Alibaba and 40 Thieves. Have you read this story when you were kids? So Alibaba and 40 Thieves. Now there is and there are two different nouns, but what should be the following verb? Is a or are a good story? Yes, guys. What do you say? So there is a situation, there is a possibility when two nouns joined by and present a singular idea. So bread and butter is a wholesome food. Soap and salad, soup and salad is too light a lunch. That uh, if we say, uh, all right, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the Indian version. Idli and dosa uh, or Idli and sambar. What is it? Uh, Idli and dosa or no, Idli and sambar is a South Indian dish or are a South Indian dish? What do you say? Exactly. Getting my point. So when I combine idli and dosa and when I present it as a dish, if you understand the two nouns when they are joined by and, but they're still presenting a singular idea. If the idea is singular, the verb also has to be kept singular. So guys, there are many examples uh, that I can put here so that you can understand how we can present singular idea by using uh, still uh, after using and. So let me uh, put it to you this way. Um, Hmm. Uh, lime and soda is a digestive drink or are a digestive drink? Yes, guys, I want all of you to answer this question. Lime and soda, yes, guys, see, lime is a separate noun and soda is a separate noun. But the question is, lime and soda is a digestive drink or are a digestive drink? Yes, guys, I want all of you to answer this question. Very well done, guys. Why? See, there are two nouns, definitely, but they all present, both of them present a singular idea. That lime and soda is a digestive drink because it has been called a drink here, right? For example, there are many such examples. For example, uh, there was a question that I came across a few years back, and now I want you to answer this question. I'm writing the question on the screen, guys. So 
So guys, always make sure that you identify the subject and logically don't just read it through. Just try to identify. Yes, guys, the question is Pride and Prejudice was or were a very interesting novel. Very good, Nekta. Very good, Chitanshu, Roshan. But guys, I can see two nouns joined by and. But see, sir, this is the name of a novel, Pride and Prejudice. Have you, has anyone heard about this? Has anyone read this? It's a very, uh, you know, very famous novel by Mira Nair, uh, Pride and Prejudice. There's a movie as well. I think Ashwarya Rai acted in that. Right. Yes. Very good, Uttam. So Pride and Prejudice, this, this, this was a question in one of the uh, exams a few years back. And this is how he tries to uh, confuse the student. So Pride and Prejudice, although two different nouns, but they're presenting a singular idea. So the answer should be Pride and Prejudice was a very interesting novel. Is it clear to everyone? A novel B last me likha hua absolutely Sitanshu. That also gives you a hint. But you know, when we are uh, when we are attempting in the exam, time crunch itna zada hota hai. We are uh, rushing through the questions. Hum bahut jaldi rehti hai hume question padne ki na. So kabi kabi aisa hota hai ki hum question pad to jate hain. Lekin hum ye dhyan nahi dete ki wo ek ek singular idea present kar raha hai ya nahi kar raha hai, right? So that has to be taken care of. So sometimes. Not most of the times, very rarely, but sometimes, and you know, question kaha se aate hai? 19, no, my question is, guys, my simple uh, question to you is, what do you think? Wo question kaha se puchega? 99% jo aapko aata hai, jo aap use karte ho day-to-day -day life mein usme se, ya jo 1% jo exception se unme se? What do you say? What do you think? And that is what he wants to see. Are you well prepared? Have you, uh, do you have the insight into the topic? So this is what I wanted to express today that he basically asks you questions on that 1% of the top uh, of the topic that is lesser known rules, right? Uh, rules that are not very uh, often uh, discussed uh, in between the students or teachers don't usually discuss such type of questions. Uh, Uttam is saying 99% may say, so 99% uh, aapko aata hai, Uttam. So I think that should not be a problem for you. Am I right? So guys, when preparing you should prepare for 100 percent 99 percent you already know but one percent we are discussing today right all right guys uh done with the rule so guys let's begin rule number three so guys two singular subjects joined by or or nor will take a singular verb now guys always remember if two singular subjects are joined by or or nor it will take a singular verb or i think it's, it's easy to understand a doctor or a nurse is working in the hospital. Why? Because we know either it is a doctor or it is a nurse. Any one of them is working. So we can, uh, you know, we can actually come to the conclusion. So this is absolutely correct. A doctor and a nurse is working in the hospital. But uh, if I say, Rina nor Rahul now has submitted or have uh, okay uh, has arrived yet or have arrived yet that is the question i wanted to ask you now guys reena nor rahul now what he's saying if two nouns are joined by nor right so the verb following verb should be singular or plural yes guys what should be the answer here very good roshan very good nekta very good uttam yes guys very good balaji very good dia reena nor rahul what does that mean? So what we generally try to do is we try to add up. What do we think? That uh, neither Rina has arrived nor Rahul has arrived. That means both of them have not arrived. And when we start thinking in this manner that both of them have not arrived, we always choose a plural verb. But guys, if I had to say that both of them have not, not arrived, so I would have just said both Rina and Rahul have not arrived yet. But the point is we do not use negative uh, sentences with both. So that is why we use neither and nor. So guys, always remember, even in neither, it means neither Rina nor Rahul. And I told you earlier, there is only one conjunction in English language that can make two, two nouns the subject of a sentence. Remember that. So guys, what do you think? Both the nouns are subjects or uh, one of them is the subject? Either one of them could be the subject, but if it is singular, the verb has also to be kept singular. Very good, Roshan. Right. So guys, this is what you need to understand that if two nouns, uh, two subjects are joined by using or or nor, it will take a singular verb, right? 
so you have to remember that for example uh, okay let me let me ask this question to you the players or the coach uh, is responsible or are responsible for the loss yes guys what do you say the players or the coach is responsible or are responsible for the loss now guys these two nouns are not singular noun i have used a plural noun the players or the coach yes guys what should be the correct answer very well done the players or the coach is responsible now guys if you get this scenario now if you face such a scenario now how do you choose the verb now whichever noun is closest to the verb will decide the verb if i you know uh, if i interchange the positions of both the nouns if i if i had said the coach or the players the coach or the players now what should be the correct verb guys what do you say the coach or the players is responsible or are responsible for the loss now what do you what do you think guys now i want all of you to answer yes vik balaji uh, diya uh, roshan indu uttam nikta siddharth i want all of you to participate guys let's make this session receptive yes very good atharv very good sanket very good balaji now which noun will decide the verb the noun closest to the verb very good nikta uttam so guys now the closest noun is players the players is plural now it will take a plural verb so this is what you have to understand if two singular subjects are joined by using or and nor it will take a singular verb but if you have a scenario where you face one singular noun or one plural noun or both the nouns are plural if both are plural the verb will be plural if both are singular verb will be singular but the question is if there is one singular and one plural noun for example the coach was singular here players were plural here so the noun closest to the verb will decide the verb in the sentence below coach was singular players were plural so whichever noun is closest to the verb will decide the verb got it all right guys let's move on to the next rule yes guys what does the rule say if you want to uh, basically understand the rule says a singular subject and a plural subject joined by or either or neither nor none uh, none but uh, not only but also will take a singular or a plural verb depending on which subject is near the verb this is what i was trying to explain you before that if two nouns are joined by i only told you either or neither nor but guys wrote, write down these points if two nouns are joined by using or or with the pair of either or or with the pair of neither nor or with the pair of none but or with the pair of not only but also will take a verb which will be decided by the yes guys which will be decided by what do you say guys which will be decided by the noun which is closest to the verb it means either or has yes absolutely sanket see or is a uh, or is a, a simple or or uh, sorry simple either or simple neither right they are uh, pronouns either of the two boys has done this neither of the two countries is stopping the war so either and neither when used uh, you know separately they act as pronouns but when they when they are used with or and nor they act as conjunctions very good right so guys do note down these um, you know these uh, words that have marked in red or either or neither nor none but not only but also so guys if you see two nouns connected with these pairs the noun closest to the verb will decide the verb so let's look at the examples guys neither deepak nor his friends yes guys why have we used are here because the closest noun was friends right so neither deepak nor his friends are joining the tour next question neither his friends nor deepak now we are using a singular verb why because the closest now is the closest noun now is deepak which is singular so neither his friends nor deepak is joining the tour another example none but the leaders of our country 
yes guys none but the leaders of our country are responsible for this so guys the noun which is closest to the verb is leaders of our country that is the object of leaders leaders of our country but the subject is leaders here so why have we used our none but the leaders of our country are responsible okay none but uh, him if i had said none but him has the answer or have the answer to this question yes guys now i want you to answer this question none but him none but him means no one else but him has the answer or have the answer very well done guys very good athar very good sanket balaji uh, vek diya yes guys what do you say should be the answer here none but him has the answer or have the answer very good very good dear so see we see him being singular that will decide the verb got it so guys please note it down if two nouns if two subjects are joined by or either or neither nor none but or not only but also let me put it, let me use an example of not only but also um not only his friends but also his brother has or have left yes guys what should be the correct answer here not only his friends but also his brother but also his brother i missed out also here not only his friends but also his brother has left him or have left him very good balaji very good vek very well dear very well siddharth indu very good uh, uttam nikta very well done guys see which is the closest noun here brother so we have to use a singular verb so guys always remember if two nouns are joined by or either or neither nor none but or not only but also whichever noun is the close whichever noun is closest to the verb will decide the verb got it has everyone jotted it down guys are you making notes nahi sir hame jo lag raha hai ki hum to bas kiye ja rahe hain don't do that guys because you may need to revise these rules before the exam are you making notes very good uttam very well done guys all right guys let's move ahead rule number 5 now guys again i'm giving you some conjunctions now as i told you you don't need to remember these conjunctions because if you remember that rule ke puri english language mein 1 plus 1 karne ke ability sirf kiske paas hoti hai i told you in rule number 1 you remember that there is only one conjunction that has the ability to connect two nouns and make both the nouns subjects very good roshan yes guys which conjunction was it very good indu yes guys which conjunction was it i want all of you to answer guys i'm not talking to my computer i'm trying to help you out so let's see if you've understood it or not which uh, conjunction has the ability to connect two nouns and make both the nouns subject very good nirmala very good uttam yes guys very good atharv very good praveen very good balaji there is only one conjunction that has the ability to connect two nouns and make both the noun subjects and that is and now in this rule what he says is if two subjects are joined by as well as with along with together with besides in addition to and not rather than uh, sorry and not uh, this is not and not this is only not or rather than the verb will act according to the main subject now which is the main subject the subject that falls in the beginning so students as well as the teacher now we usually have uh, have the tendency of looking at the closest noun but closest noun will only be seen in which uh, words or either or neither nor uh, none but and not only but also remember that but any other conjunction you will only look at the first noun students as well as the teacher is playing or are playing yes guys so now guys now you cannot look at the noun closest to the verb now you have to look at the noun which is the main subject remember that so students as well as the teacher are playing he as well as his brothers are sitting there or is sitting there 
yes guys which is the subject here he as well as his brothers are sitting there or is sitting there so it should be he as well as his brothers is sitting there i'll i'll make another example for you india besides other let me try to make you know you make the question as if it it is an it is a question of your exam india besides other nato countries has or have criticized this war yes guys what should be the correct answer here quickly very good roshan very good siddharth very good indu very good aditi yes guys very good salma india besides other nato countries now if i didn't know what subject verb agreement means and what this rules tells us if i were a uh, if i were a student who doesn't know what subject verb agreement is now i would have definitely chosen have looking at the word countries here remember but which is the subject here not other nato countries the subject is india and if we do not see and here that means this is not the subject we only have to look at india so guys what should be the answer here very well done athar very good ashwin very good balaji india besides other nato countries has criticized this war because the subject here is india right let's look at another example guys i as well as he now if i you know if you didn't know this you would have written he is going or i as well as he are going but you definitely would not have used am here am i right yes guys look at the uh, look at the example number 3 i as well as he uh, am going is going or are going yes guys what do you think you would have chosen exactly acha aap am likhte aap pata lag gaya to am likhte lekin ab is cheez ko follow karna shuru karna hai now we need to follow this that uh, you know whenever we basically you know whenever we see two nouns or two pronouns connected by any other conjunction except and right we have to look at the main subject except for those uh, uh, words that i just told you in rule number 4 which are or either or neither nor not none but not only but also in these exceptions you have to look at the nouns closest to the verb right but other than that if and is not the conjunction do not look at the second noun look at the first noun let me make another example of uh, using uh, not right reena not her classmates yes guys was or were there yes guys what should be the very well done roshan siddharth reena not her classmates was there or were there very good nirmala very good salma very good uttam very well done guys reena not her classmates yes guys what what should you look at classmates or reena reena so it should be reena not her classmates was there so that is the correct answer very good indu uh exactly not just emphasis on uh, reena sanket it this is more about finding out the subject in this sentence not her classmates is the object of the sentence in the above examples besides other nato countries this is the object of the sentence the sentence should have been india has criticized this war besides other nato countries in the next example it should have been reena was there not her classmates but what he does is he he tries to confuse you by putting the object in front of the subject using a conjunction and that is why we start counting them as subjects right so guys make sure you do not make that mistake again her classmates not reena absolutely siddharth if you had written if it was the other way around guys if i if i had started the sentence this way her classmates not reena then we would have used were there got it siddharth very well done all right guys let's move on to the next rule rule number 6 yes guys please note down these 12 words each everyone everybody someone somebody no one nobody 
one either neither either and neither when used alone not with or and nor but when they are used alone always always please focus this always take a singular verb reason being these words are inherently singular each means pratek everyone har ek everybody har koi someone koi ek somebody koi ek nobody koi ek bhi nahi no one koi ek bhi nahi one ek either dono mein se koi ek neither dono mein se koi ek bhi nahi so each everyone everybody someone somebody no one nobody now you can use two more words here any one which are not given here probably any one and anybody you can also add these two words now guys if a sentence or if a clause begins with any of these words aankh band karke yaad rakhna the verb will always be singular so guys this rule has no exception to it if a sentence begins with each everyone someone no one anyone anybody somebody either neither one the verb has definitely to be kept singular now there are a few examples each of my friends call me or calls me once a month each of my friends calls me my calls me once a month here yes guys in this sentence what is the subject friends or each that's what i wanted to ask yes guys in this sentence what is the subject each or my friends very good sitanshu very good uttam and guys i want all of you to participate yes guys what is the uh, what is the subject in the sentence very good indu nirmala each and each means pratek har ek so that is why we have to use a singular verb that is calls very good sanket similarly each boy and each girl now guys this rule supersedes the rule of and i told you there is only one conjunction that can make two nouns the subjects but i never said and we also saw the exception in rule number 2 that two nouns joined by and can still take a singular verb and this is another example each boy if the first word of any sentence is any of these words aankh band karke maan ke chalna the verb will always be singular each boy pratek ladka aur pratek ladki aa chuke hain ya aa chuka hai her teacher or her student yahi chahte hain ya yahi chahta hai now you will understand we use this in our language in hindi but we don't usually follow it in english right see bigger result aa gaya are mazak kar rahe ho yes seriously guys don't make such uh, jokes aapka naam mein lol likha hua hai how can i trust you lol man <laughs> uh, but uh, seriously agar aa gaya to please do share it with us yaar if you are if you are not kidding please uh, do let us know if aa gaya to but uh, we are not here preparing for sebi we are preparing for rbi assistant here uh, are congratulations dear uh, god bless you dear proud of you so guys uh, there was some update on the youtube uh, that uh, no, sebi result has been announced yes all right uttam very well done don't run away now okay okay and i i i don't know because i'm live here taking the session thank you so much dear i'm so proud of you god bless you you've been selected because of aditab keep up the good work dear god bless you i know you must be very very happy start preparing for phase 2 this is high time right all right guys let's continue the session one must tolerate one's friend as well as enemy yes guys one must tolerate one's friend as well as enemy so that now when we see any of these words can you note down these words yes guys has everyone noted down these words each every one everybody someone somebody no one nobody either neither yes guys uh, god bless you and all my wishes are with you dear uh, lol man i hope you crack both the phases then you crack the interview and you become a cb grade a officer all right guys let's move on to the next rule rule number 7 non finite pronouns such as now guys these are very important uh, this is a very important rule but in uh, you know uh, beside, beyond the rule let me just ask you something uh, i'm putting down these words to you guys simple what should be the following verb all all is or all are yes guys now just let me just look at your instinct first and then i'll explain it to you yes guys all is or all are what is your first in instinct very good salma all is or all are some yes guys 
some some is or some are very good siddharth now guys we usually tend to uh, take plural verbs with these words but sitanshu as sitanshu has said all is well or all are well we have seen three idiots right so usme gana tha bada famous yaar all is well to all is well kaise hua yes guys i hope you understand this all is well or all are well now guys both the sentences are correct actually it depends on the context if i ask you how are your parents what do you say so okay uh, if i ask you how uh, how's everyone at your home ghar pe sab kaise hain aap kya bologe sir all are well aur main waise puchunga bhai uh, jeevan mein sab theek chal raha hai to aap kya bologe sir all is well theek hai ab main agar bolta hu yaar some are born leaders ab some are born leaders ka matlab kya hua koi kuch log paidaishi leaders hote hain right अब ये कंफ्यूजिंग हो जाता है बहुत कि अब मैं बोलता हूँ समथिंग इज रॉन्ग राइट तो समथिंग इज रॉन्ग भी ठीक है सम आर बॉन लीडर्स भी ठीक है तो अब ये जो वर्ड्स आपको लिखा रहा हूं ना इन पे आपको क्या ध्यान रखना है प्लीज नोट डाउन दीज वर्ड्स वेरी केयरफुली सम ऑल नन पार्ट मेजोरिटी रिमाइंडर परसेंटेज फ्रैक्शन मोस्ट एंड रेस्ट नाउ दीज वर्ड्स आर नॉन फाइनाइट प्रोनाउंस नॉन फाइनाइट मीन्स दे कैनॉट डिसाइड दैट इफ वी आर सिंगुलर और इफ वी आर प्लूरल so what happens is when you use these words you have to look at the following noun the noun that is followed after them for example if i say a uh, part or let's say majority majority of the voters majority of the voters uh has voted or have voted what would you say now guys quickly give me your answer majority of the voters has voted or have voted absolutely guys so it should be have but i i have written another example for you now look at this sentence and they tell me what should be the correct uh, verb here majority of the voters absolutely correct correct have voted right uh majority of the population is unhappy or are unhappy now what should be the correct verb the point is we are using the same word majority right so when we say voters we are using plural but when we said population we are using singular so how the how does this work so basically guys that's what i said these now words are non finite words they cannot decide that if we are we are being used as singular or plural right for example rest of the money yes guys rest of the money uh, all right money m e n e y uh, all right let's put it this rest of the money is spent ya yeah, are spent yes guys what should be the correct verb here rest of the money is spent or are spent very good rest of the money is spent on uh, silly things right but rest of the students what would you use rest of the students uh has left or have left so guys basically remember these words some all none part majority remainder now what do you mean by percentage if i say 10% of india is uninhabited or are are uninhabited yes guys now let me see how well uh, connected you are with your uh, concepts yes guys 10% of india is uninhabited or are uninhabited very good uh, dayana uttam uh, purvi very well done very good and if i say 10% of indians is uh, uh, is unemployed or are unemployed very good purvi very good dayana swarnam andu salma very well done guys so 10% of india is but 10% of indians are similarly fraction one third of the land is but one third of the voters or one third of the uh, political leaders are so basically these words are non finite words whenever you see these words always look at the next noun not these noun so the rule is these words are non finite words do not take them as subjects you see why am i tell, tell, telling this to you because in the previous rule i taught you if you ever see those words which words each every one everybody someone somebody no one nobody anyone anybody one any every either neither the verb will always be singular and in this rule what i'm saying if you see any of these words 
uh, at the beginning of a sentence don't look at these words look at the next noun or look at the con context if the next noun is singular the verb will be singular uh, if the next noun is plural verb will be plural very good balaji cleared phase one thank you erita thank you and <clears throat> thank you for believing in us balaji god bless you dear keep up the good work and i'm so proud of you uh, start preparing for phase two this is the right time and i think you should give your best right so keep up the good work dear so is everything clear guys yes uttam siddharth uh, i'm asking you guys is uh, has everyone understood this nekta purvi aditi very well done guys all right let's move on to the next rule guys rule number 7 uh, uh sorry rule number 8 the title of books needs singular verbs that i i think i already told you this is not a very uh this is not a rule that uh, you know that needs to be taught separately for example great expectations is a good book or are a good book gulliver travels as i told you pride and prejudice or ali baba and 40 thieves or lamb stales right there are many books which uh, you know which have Uh, a plural noun at the end of them but still they take a singular verb reason being they it's still one name right it's one title so you cannot give it a plural verb so i think that's that was an easy one and i think you understood this right let's look at this rule guys now this is an interesting rule have you ever seen this many a uh, uh, persons have made this mistake now guys usually we say many people have made this mistake right but guys aaj ke baad from today onwards always remember if many is followed by a or an for that matter if many is followed by a or an it will always be followed by not just a singular verb but also a singular noun so many a is always followed by a singular noun as well as a singular verb so it should have been not persons it should have been many a person and instead of have we should have used has so this is a rule that we may not have come across up till now right so many a see we if a if a was not there in this example example number 1 if a was not there we had to use many men were drowned in the sea but if we have used a with many we have to keep the noun singular as well as the verb singular so many a man was drowned in the sea many a student has not done his homework so you need to remember this phrase from today onwards if many is followed by a or an it is always paired with a singular noun and obviously if it, if noun is singular then what do you what have you learnt in the basic rule the verb will also be kept singular am i right so this is one rule that you need to remember from today onwards let me give you an example uh, there was a question that i uh, i came across a few years back many a uh, politicians many a uh, politicians have been uh have been reprimanded for their uh, misdeeds yes it was something like that uh, many a uh, politicians have been reprimanded for their misdeeds now guys there are three mistakes in this sentence let me see who can find out all three mistakes here i'm waiting for your answers guys so many a politicians have been reprimanded for their misdeeds can you find the three mistakes don't write it separately roshan politician very good it should be politician instead of politicians has and what is the third very no 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 has been that is correct what is the third mistake very good chitanshu see many a should be followed by a singular noun so it should be politician then it should be followed by a singular verb which should be has and then there was the third mistake but sitanshu it should not be its it should be his its is used for non living objects it should be his very good nekta very good swarnam so many a politician has been reprimanded for his misdeeds so that should be the correct sentence here very good got it guys 
I hope you've understood this rule, which is a very important rule that if many is followed by a or an, it always takes a singular noun as well as a singular verb. And if there is a corresponding pronoun uh, in the sentence, the pronoun will also be kept singular because the subject is singular, right? Got it, guys? Very good, Praveen. Very well done. So observance is very guys. You want to observe karna shuru karo. Once you start observing them, you will start remembering them and you will start practicing them as you go. When you are reading your newspapers, editorials. Very good, Indu. Reprimanded means unko. Uh, कहते हैं ना कि उनको सबक सिखाया गया उनको मतलब उनके ऊपर केस चले उनको रेप्रिमांड किया गया मतलब उनको उनके ऊपर कार्रवाई करना अगर हम हिंदी में बोले तो शितांशु रेप्रिमांडेड मतलब उनको डांटा गया उनको पनिश किया गया तो उनके ऊपर केस चला इंक्वायरी चली और उनको फिर पनिश किया गया गॉट इट ऑलराइट गाइस चलो मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट रूल रूल नंबर 10 इफ द सब्जेक्ट इज the number of use a singular verb main pura rule batata hu guys aapko ye sirf usne aadha rule dikhaya aapko ye do phrases yaad rakhne hai aaj ke baad kahin pe bhi aapko sentence ki shuruaat mein aaj ke baad a number of mile aur kahin pe bhi aaj ke baad aapko sentence ki shuruaat mein the number of aage chahe kuch bhi likha ho that doesn't matter ye cheez yaad rakhna a number of will always take a plural verb अब देखो वैसे तो अ का मतलब हमें क्या लगता है दिमाग से सिंगुलर राइट और द का मतलब क्या लगता है हमें प्लूरल बट इट इज द अदर वे अराउंड अ नंबर ऑफ विल ऑलवेज टेक अ प्लूरल वर्ब वेयर एज द नंबर ऑफ विल ऑलवेज टेक अ सिंगुलर वर्ब रीजन बीइंग अ का मतलब सिर्फ सिंगुलर नहीं होता गाइस अ का मतलब होता है रैंडम कोई भी एक नंबर और नंबर कोई भी है तो इट विल ऑलवेज टेक अ प्लूरल वर्ब ठीक है अच्छा ये इसने रूल नंबर 11 बना दिया देखो मैं आपको इकट्ठा समझा रहा हूं रूल नंबर 11 में उसने ये दिया है अ नंबर ऑफ फॉर एग्जांपल अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ अ ग्रेट नंबर ऑफ मेनी सो आई एम टेलिंग यू द सेम रूल हियर और शितांशु सब्जेक्ट प्लूरल नहीं नहीं वो मैं अभी वही बता रहा हूं आई विल जस्ट टेल यू शितांशु आई एम जस्ट कमिंग टू द योर क्वेश्चन अ नंबर ऑफ विल ऑलवेज टेक अ प्लूरल वर्ब द नंबर ऑफ विल ऑलवेज टेक अ सिंगुलर वर्ब फॉर एग्जांपल a number of cases uh, covid cases a number of covid cases has been or have been registered in the city yes guys a number of cases here basically shitanshu means many cases right a number of cases a number of covid cases a number of basically means many so it is plural in, uh, in itself. So a number of COVID cases, the following noun will all obviously be plural because we're talking about plural cases, right? Chitanshu. So in with a number of, you will use a plural noun, a plural subject. A number of COVID cases have been registered in the city. But if I had done this, the number of cases, the number of cases of COVID, has risen or have risen sharply now guys now what do you say should be used here exactly now the number of cases now this will also be followed by a plural noun but ironically the verb will be singular shitanshu got that very good praveen indu uh, nikta very good so the number of cases of covid now we are talking about a specific number. The number, wo, uh, sankhya, ke COVID ke cases ki sankhya bad gaye hai ya bad gaye hai. A number ka matlab hota bhoat saare. Te, bhoat saare COVID cases aa gaye hai. Lekin COVID ke cases ki sankhya bad gaye hai ya bad gaye hai. Ab hindi mein bhi samaj aega aapko ye cheez. The number of cases of COVID has risen sharply. Got it? So that is the correct answer here. Got it, guys? So a number of will always take, will always be followed by a plural subject and a plural verb. If that, that's what you were asking, Sitanchu. But the number of will be followed by a plural noun, but it will be followed by a singular verb. That is what you need to understand. So the number of books is very small. The number of boys in this team are 10 or is 10. So that is how you understand this. The number of books is very small. The number of boys in this team is 
10. Yes, CB result is out. Uh, Malakshmi, go check it out. All right, guys, moving on to next rule. This is what I was telling you. So not just a number of, if they also give you a large number of, a great number of, or many for that matter, you still have to use a plural verb. A number of books are missing. A large number of voters did not vote this time. A great number of uh, uh, incidents are registered every year due to negligence of driving. Uh, you know, many many we all already know that it is considered plural right so a number of will always take a plural verb a large number of right uh, a small number of a great number of a huge number of or many this will always take a plural verb whereas the number of will always take a singular verb right next rule guys now this is what i wanted to discuss with you uh now guys last rule for uh, this session Right, some nouns in the plural form represent an amount, a fraction, or an element of time. So, as I tried to explain, guys, how many of you were there in the uh, workshop yesterday? Did you attend the workshop? If you were there in the workshop, Swarnim was there, right? So, I had explained this rule in a better way. Very good. Uh, Shitanshu, you were not there. Nirmala was there. So, I said not just these three, three, three things. Now, remember these six things. If a number represents one amount of money, time, distance, volume, weight, or any sort of measurement. Now, guys, if a number represents one amount of money, time, distance, volume, weight, or any sort of measurement, right? But one amount, it should be one amount, not separate amounts. If a number represents one amount of money, time, distance, volume, weight, or any sort of measurement, it always takes a singular verb. I'll give an example for all of them. For example, uh, 2,000, I'm just writing it in short, 2,000 rupees. Yes, guys, is the cost or are the cost of this dress? Now, you keep on giving me the answers, guys. Time. Uh, three years. Three years is a long time or are a long time? Or let, let, let me put it there. Three years is the duration or are the duration of this course? Are the duration of a bachelor's degree? Okay, let, let, let me put it to you this way. Yes, guys, three years is the duration or are the duration of a bachelor's degree? Yes, guys, five miles is a long walk or are a long walk or is a long distance or are a long distance to walk? What do you say, guys? Although I'm using plural nouns, see, rupees, years, miles, but they're representing one amount, volume. Uh, Four, uh, okay, let me put it to you this way. Four liters of milk is consumed or are consumed every day in my family. Yes, guys, wait. Uh, 50 kilograms. 50 kilograms is heavy or are heavy for any human being. And measurement, 50 feet, you can say, or 50 meters for that matter. 50 feet, 50 meters, 50 kilometers uh, is wide or high. Yeah, are wide or high. So always remember these six elements, money, time, distance, volume, weight, or any sort of measurement. Always remember if... A number represents one amount of money, time, distance, volume, weight, or any sort of measurement. The verb is always kept singular. So that means an amount of money. For example, 60,000 rupees uh, was my salary, were my salary when I joined this post. Was my salary, right? Uh, a fraction, for example, a fraction of time or an element of time, for example, 60 seconds is the duration or 20 minutes is the duration of this uh, section or are the duration of this section. 
is the duration of this section very well done so guys always remember if a noun uh, if a number represents one amount of money time distance volume or any sort of measurement the verb will always be kept singular got it all right guys so these were the rules that i wanted to discuss with you guys is there uh, anyone who has any doubt in any of these rules so guys every day we will start we'll keep on taking such rules and by the time we finish these classes you will have covered the complete grammatical section you will have understood what are the uh, refined rules that you need to worry about right 50 meters are high no dear sitanshu 50 meters is high hoga 50 meters kya wo alag alag 50 meters hai 50 meters ki ek height hai 50 meters is high वैसे मीटर में हाई नहीं होता 50 फीट होता है वैसे चितांशु मीटर में तो लंबाई होती है डिस्टेंस होता है बट स्टिल इफ यू आर आस्किंग दैट 50 मीटर्स इज वाइड या आर वाइड 20 मीटर्स इज अ वाइड रोड या आर अ वाइड रोड सो इट शुड बी आई इज नॉट आर चितांशु गॉट इट सो गाइस आर दीस रूल्स क्लियर टू एवरीवन नाउ वी आर बिगिनिंग विद द प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चंस so that you can answer these questions single entity ni show kar raha hai kyun nahi kar raha single entity sitanshu yes sitanshu 50 meters is a long distance ya chalo main bolta hu 100 meters is the distance uh, uh, of a race short race or are the distance of a short race ab wo 100 meter jo hai wo distance to ek hi hai na क्या वो या वो अलग अलग सौ मीटर है कि दस मीटर भाग गया फिर रुक गया फिर पंद्रह मीटर भागे फिर रुक गए वो सौ मीटर इकट्ठा भागना पड़ता है ना तो हंड्रेड मीटर इज द शॉर्टेस्ट रेस या आर द शॉर्टेस्ट रेस इन ओलंपिक्स क्या बोलते हो तो जब वो एक डिस्टेंस को रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं ना इट विल बी कंसिडर्ड सिंगुलर ये याद रखना शीतांशु इट इज नॉट रिप्रेजेंटिंग सेपरेट डिस्टेंसेज इट इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग वन डिस्टेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल Uh, one lakh rupees. Ab rupees, don't you think they are plural? Olympics. I have said in the past, right, Anshu? Before I said, what did I say? Fifty meters is the shortest race. Are the shortest race? Fifty meters are high. Uh, are wide is wide. Fifty meters. Ab fifty meters are joined wide. Made, right? If I look at one one meter, it will not be wide. If you understand what I am saying, Anshu? If you understand what I am saying, Anshu? अगर मैं बोलूं 50 मीटर्स वाइड कब है जब वो इकट्ठा 50 मीटर्स है राइट एग्जैक्टली बट वो अलग अलग होते तब मैं बोल देता कि भाई वन वन मीटर वन मीटर वन मीटर वो अलग अलग होते लेकिन कलेक्टिवली है कलेक्टिवली तो हमें उसको सिंगुलर ही रखना पड़ता है राइट सो गाइज आर यू रेडी फॉर द क्वेश्चन बट वन बाय वन करना गाइज आगे आंसर मत करना आई रीड आउट द क्वेश्चन टू यू एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन इंडिविजुअली सो गाइज आर यू रेडी विद द क्वेश्चन no officer mindset we are live right now this is not pre recorded we are taking this session live if i can read your um, chat that means it is right all right so guys you ready for the questions let's begin guys uh, so question number 1 first read the questions i'll read out the question to you so that uh, i can explain it to you and then we will discuss the questions right so you have to, uh, a sentence has been uh, broken down in five parts right the slash will represent uh, the end of first part then our next slash will represent the end of second part the next slash will represent the end of third part similarly the sentence has been broken down in five parts so what you have to do is you have to uh, find the erroneous part in these sentences right these questions so first question is educated indians as well as politicians by and large appears to be well aware of though not necessarily well versed with certain provisions of the constitutions yes guys what is the erroneous part here educated indians as well as politicians we just read today that if two nouns are joined by any other conjunction except and so we cannot consider the second noun a subject the subject is only indians so indians is plural right so if indians is plural the verb should also be plural yes guys but the question here is the verb he has used here is appears appears is singular so guys for indians we should have used a plural verb which should have been appear ab isme bahut bachcho ko galti hoti hai कि सर ये अपियर और अपियर्स में सिंगुलर प्लूरल कैसे पता चलेगा हमें 
किसी को ये प्रॉब्लम होती है गाइस कि सर अपियर सिंगुलर होता है अपियर सिंगुलर होता है अगर किसी को प्रॉब्लम होती है प्लीज आस्क मी राइट नाउ आई एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू राइट नाउ क्लियर है सीतांशु कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होता इसमें स्वर्णिम को होता है अथर्व को होता है और बड़ा सिंपल सा शॉर्टकट दूंगा आज के बाद ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं आएगी इंदू को भी होता है दिया को भी होता है और राइट लेट्स ट्राई टू आई ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू गाइज यू हैव नोटेड दिस डाउन Has everyone noted noted this down? Uh, तो जगह ही नहीं है कहा तो uh, right. uh, so सबसे पहले प्रॉब्लम कहाँ थी गाइज देखो बाकी हमें इज एम आर वॉज वर ये तो हमें समझ आ जाता है राइट right? वो हमें पता है कंफ्यूजन ये एस लगाना और एस नहीं लगाना इसमें बड़ी कंफ्यूजन होती है तो आपको ना बड़ा सिंपल सी ट्रिक दे रहा हूँ आज एक याद रखने की इससे आप कभी गलती नहीं करोगे जब भी आपको ये चेक करना हो कि यहाँ पे वर्ब में एस लगेगा या नहीं लगेगा ये प्रेजेंट इनडेफिनेट में लगता है जब वर्ब के फर्स्ट फॉर्म यूज होती है गाइज सेकेंड फॉर्म और थर्ड फॉर्म में यूज नहीं होता ठीक है हम वेंट का वेंट्स नहीं बनाते ठीक है हम कुड का कुड्स नहीं बनाती है फर्स्ट फॉर्म में यूज होता है तो याद कैसे रखना गाइस फर्स्ट पर्सन सेकंड पर्सन थर्ड पर्सन और इनको याद रखने का तरीका क्या है आईपीएस आईपीएस ठीक है फर्स्ट पर्सन आज के बाद याद रखना गाइस सिर्फ कौन होता है आई ठीक है अब हमें सर हमें तो बुक्स में सिखाया गया था कि आई और वी होता है फर्स्ट पर्सन नो गाइस आज के बाद याद रखना फर्स्ट पर्सन इज ओनली आई सेकेंड पी स्टैंड फॉर प्लूरल्स अब जितने भी प्लूरल्स आते हैं ना गाइज याद रखना वो सारे सेकंड पर्सन में आते हैं कौन कौन जितने भी प्लूरल्स हैं वी यू दे यू को प्लूरल माना जाता है बाय द वे चाहे वो सिंगुलर मैं सामने वाले एक इंसान से बात करूं चाहे मैं एक से ज्यादा से बात कर रहा हूं बट यू इज ऑलवेज कंसिडर्ड प्लूरल यू वी दे और कोई भी प्लूरल वर्ड हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल बॉयज गर्ल्स सिटीजन कंट्रीज इंडियंस अमेरिकन ठीक है टेबल्स चेयर वहीकल्स तो सारे प्लूरल जो है वो सेकेंड पर्सन में आते हैं तो उस कंटेक्ट से समझना एंड एस स्टैंड फॉर सिंगुलर ठीक है अब सिंगुलर कौन से कौन से बचते हैं अपने पास सबसे पहला ही शी इट फिर उसके बाद कोई भी सिंगुलर नाउन है फॉर एग्जाम्पल बॉय गर्ल रोहित रीना इंडिया चाइना सो गाइज अब इसको इस कंसेप्ट से समझो ये कभी भी प्रॉब्लम नहीं आएगी आज के बाद नाउ फर्स्ट पर्सन क्या करता है सिर्फ वर्ब की फर्स्ट फॉर्म यूज करता है हम क्या बोलते हैं गाइज आई प्ले आई प्लेज नहीं बोलते ठीक है आई गो आई गोज नहीं बोलते आई डू आई डज नहीं बोलते आई कुक आई कुक्स नहीं बोलते सो आई ऑलवेज टेक्स द फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ वर्ब आई के साथ हम हमेशा कौन सी फॉर्म यूज करते हैं गाइज ऑलवेज रिमेंबर वी यूज फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ वर्ब सेकेंड प्लूरल्स के साथ हम क्या करते हैं प्लूरल्स के साथ भी हम हम कौन सी वर्ब यूज करते हैं हमेशा फर्स्ट फॉर्म ठीक है फॉर एग्जांपल वी और यू फॉर दैट मैटर और दे और बॉयज और गर्ल्स वी प्ले यू प्ले बॉयज प्ले गर्ल्स गो सिटीजन डू दे कुक सो प्लूरल आल्सो टेक फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ वर्ब गेटिंग इट अब याद क्या रखना है सिर्फ आपको थर्ड पर्सन अब याद कैसे रखना है एस से सिंगुलर अब सिंगुलर में हमें क्या याद रखना है आई को और प्लूरल को छोड़ के जितने भी सिंगुलर बचे ही शी इट रोहन रीना इंडिया चाइना वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट सिंगुलर नाउन सिंगुलर में हमें क्या ऐड करना पड़ता है वर्ब के बाद एस ई एस आई ई एस या वी ई एस ये ऐड किया जाता है अकॉर्डिंग टू द वर्ब अब कैसे ही अब ही के साथ हम क्या बोलते हैं प्लेज अब ही प्ले नहीं बोलते ही के साथ क्या बोलते हैं प्लेज शी के साथ क्या बोलते हैं शी गो नहीं शी गोज ठीक है रोहन डू नहीं रोहन डज ठीक है माई मदर कुक नहीं माई मदर कुक्स सो सिंगुलर के साथ हम थर्ड पर्सन के साथ हम क्या करते हैं वर्ब में एस एड करते हैं यहां पर गेटिंग इट तो ये चीज आपको याद रखनी है वेन वी आर रेफरिंग टू अ प्लूरल नाउन और आई वी विल यूज ओनली फर्स्ट फॉर्म ऑफ वर्ब But when we are referring to third person singular, see guys, any singular word, Rohan, Rina, India, China, the world, uh, a person, a, a body, the government, the uh, the government is singular, right? Uh, the crowd, the school, the team, right? These words are singular, so they will take a singular verb with them. And singular means after first form of verb, we have to use s e s, i e s, or v e s. Is that clear to everyone? 
so guys that is why we used appear here why was appears wrong because appears is used for singular but the subject here was indians indians was plural so plural we have to use first form of verb got it everyone swarnam roshan indu yes guys everyone clear to everyone i hope this helps you because exam mein bahut zyada question aise aate hain good roshan guys is it clear to everyone all right very good uttam so ab ye cheez hame dhyan rakhne hai isme ye galtiyan nahi karenge ab ye cheez clear hai sabko guys if you want to note it down uh, and i think you would have noted it down but please note it down right this is very important because this is going to stay with you throughout your life got it so guys please note it down and make sure that you use it in your day to day life got it swarnam so ab that is why we have to use appear here instead of appears so educated indians as well as politicians politicians was not the subject subject was indians and indians being plural we have to use a plural verb all right guys let's move on to the second uh, question now let's try to figure out the answers let i am reading out the question to you you tell me the error in the sentence the reported observations sorry the reported observations of the honorable court during the hearing show that the actions of the state of haryana was in clear violation of the directions chitanshu says no error nekta very good very good observation nekta keep up the good work uh, dear yes guys in question number 2 what is the error in this part what is the error very good uttam very good dayana जरूरी नहीं है फर्स्ट क्लॉज में ही गलती हो हो सकता है सेकंड क्लॉज में भी गलती मिल सकता है होजे आई थिंक आई आई एम एम इफ प्रोनाउंसिंग योर नेम राइट इज इट डायना होजे और इज इट डायना आई आई होप आई डोंट प्रोनाउंस इट रॉन्ग वेरी गुड निर्मला सी लेट्स लुक एट द सब्जेक्ट फर्स्ट द रिपोर्टेड ऑब्जर्वेशन सो ऑब्जर्वेशन वॉज द सब्जेक्ट है विच इज प्लूरल right so the reported observations of the honorable court during the hearing show so this is absolutely correct according to the plural noun now after that then we begin with a new sentence this is a conjunction after that a new sentence begins the actions now the subject of the second sentence is actions so the actions of the state of haryana now what should uh, what should be used here was or were were in clear violation of the directions very good roshan so clear everyone uh yes shitanshu is it clear to you why do why have we used were here because there could be two sentences two clauses connected together so you have to look at the both the sentences i think you saw the first one you didn't look at the second one right shitanshu but that is how we learn right good job very good praveen so let's uh let's look at question number 3 the new goods and services tax will be applicable on any non monetary fringe benefit an employee get from his employer so tanchu i know this because as a as a teacher i need to uh, i have to get it every time very good nekta very good purvi yes guys what is the error in this sentence the new goods and services tax will be applicable on any non monetary fringe benefit an employee get from his employer very good uttam purvi very well done guys see i'll first look at the first subject the new gst tax this is singular and it is paired with will be this is correct so the new gst uh, will be applicable on any non monetary fringe benefit it will be applicable on any now remember this word any that means singular so any non monetary fringe benefit an employee get or gets so for singular subject we have to use a singular verb very good swarnam very good indu so it should not be get it should be gets the new goods and services tax will be applicable on any non monetary fringe benefit an employee gets from his employer that should be the correct answer here very well done guys all right guys moving on to question number 4 try that is telephone regulatory authority of india right try today started consultation process for the next round of spectrum auction that include radio waves for 5g services and frequencies chitanshu uh, in previous question the subject was on any non monetary fringe benefit an employee so when we are talking about one singular person 
singular person will take a singular verb so that is why we have to use not get we have to use gets samajh aaya shadanchu very good mahindra so try today uh, started consultation process for the next round of spectrum auction now we are talking about auction that include radio waves for 5g services and frequencies what should be used here that include we are talking about auction so what should be used here that include or that includes so try today started consultation process for the next round of spectrum auction that includes radio waves for 5g services and frequencies so the correct answer here should be includes not include very well done guys question number 5 all right guys the sfio i don't know what that is the sfio a multidisciplinary specialty authority okay so that is uh, that's the name that's the abbreviation of a, a specialty authority so the sfio a multidisciplinary specialty authority comprises officials from the police uh, the enforcement directorate bank official on deputation and income tax personnel very good diana very good shitanshu siddharth nekta uttam comprise is never followed by of uttam composed is followed by of consist is followed by of i'll discuss that with you when we will discuss uh, preposition okay so comprise is never followed by of comprise is always used alone but we have been taught to use to use uh, of after comprise if i'm not wrong yes guys what do you what do you say have your teachers taught you uh, comprise or comprise of if you had a good teacher he would have definitely taught you that comprise is not followed by of but usually what i have seen you know teachers uh, they themselves keep on using comprise of consist of compose of but guys consist of is correct compose of is correct but comprise of is wrong and that is how they make questions in the exam to confuse you so the answer here should be guys uh, very good mahindra the sfio a multidisciplinary specialty authority when we are talking about authority singular so the sfio that is singular which is a specialty authority so the sfio comprises comprises of uh, comprises officials from the police the enforcement directorate bank official and deputation and income tax personnel very good chetanshu subject a uh, singular so it should be singular verb and so that we have to use comprises very well done guys let's move on to next questions guys question number 6 uh i'll read out the question to you and let's see uh, if you are able to answer it question is at least more than one soldier were seen being uh, being evacuated from the scene which was sealed off by security forces so at least more than one soldier were seen being evacuated from the scene which was sealed off by security forces yes guys what is the error here more than one soldier means nekta please read it carefully uttam more than one soldier what does it mean no atharv uh, sorry roshan we cannot uh, insert a prep, uh, a conjunction without the use it should be soldiers right swarnam says was uh, what do you say guys praveen which were no mahindra the your first instinct was absolutely correct guys see hum mathematics dalne ki koshish kar dete hain whenever we try to learn something we try to use a lot of mathematics into it and that is the problem jaise maine bola more than one soldier aapka dimag mathematics dekhne laga sir ek se zyada to bahut sare ho gaye na bahut sare ke liye to var aana chahiye am i right sitanshu hindu jo jo bol rahe soldiers hona chahiye lekin guys one soldiers nahi ho sakta sabse pehli baat to hindu one ke sath soldiers kaise aa sakta hai han ji ek se zyada ladka gayab the ya gayab tha एक से ज्यादा इंसान ये वहां पर मौजूद थे या मौजूद था मैथमेटिक्स मत लगाया करो सब्जेक्ट देखो क्या है वहां पर मोर देन वन सोल्जर सब्जेक्ट इज सोल्जर एंड इफ द सब्जेक्ट इज सिंगुलर द वर्ब हैज टू बी केप्ट सिंगुलर सो योर फर्स्ट इंस्टिंक्ट वाज एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट बट मैं यही दिखाना चाहता था कि कैसे कई बार एग्जाम में कंफ्यूज कर देता है वो आपको करेक्ट महेंद्र तो एटलीस्ट मोर देन वन uh politician were found culp as culp were found the culprit or was found the culprit 
बेशक इसका मैथमेटिकली मतलब कुछ भी निकल रहा है लेकिन आपको वहां पे ग्रामेटिकली देखना है मोर देन वन इन मोर देन वन क्वेश्चन इज नॉट अलाउड और आर नॉट अलाउड हम मैथमेटिकली देखें तो मन करता है आर लगाने का राइट बट इट शुड बी वॉज और इज सो बेसिकली गाइज याद रखना यू हैव टू लुक एट द नाउन Do not count it in mathematics. में कल भी आपको जब उस मैराथन में बता रहा था यही बता रहा था कि बच्चों के मैथमेटिक्स बहुत ज्यादा वो यूज करने लग जाते हैं दे डो नॉट गो फॉर दू नो ऑब्वियस नाउन दैट इज गिवन राइट सो एटलीस्ट मोर देन वन सोल्जर वॉज शुड बी द करेक्ट आंसर गॉर्ड गाइज चलो क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन पे चलते हैं हैवी रेन बैंड वॉज एक्सपेक्टेड टू मूव इन ओवर द ह्यूस्टन एरिया ओवर नाइट विच विल कंटिन्यू द कटेस्ट्रफीज एंड लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग फ्लैश फ्लड इमरजेंसी I think this was an easy one. अब ये पता आप जल्दी जल्दी आंसर क्यों दे पा रहे हो क्योंकि आपको पता है कि आपको कहा गलती ढूंढनी है लेकिन पेपर में क्या होगा आपको ये वो ये बोल के नहीं देगा ये सब्जेक्ट वर्ब एग्रीमेंट का क्वेश्चन है इसमें वर्ब ढूंढ के देखो वहां पे तो आपको जितने टॉपिक होंगे ना सभी के रूल्स इकट्ठा अप्लाई करने पड़ेंगे और वो चैलेंज होता है असली ठीक है आज तो हमें पता है कि हम सब्जेक्ट और वर्ब की गलती ढूंढ रहे हैं तो इट इज इजी फॉर यू टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट है ना वो मजा मजा भी लग रहा है और आसान भी लग रहा है कि सर ये तो सर क्या सिंपल क्वेश्चन है सर आपने बता ही रखा है बैंड्स है बैंड्स के साथ तो वॉज नहीं वर आना चाहिए तो आई थिंक इट सीम्स वेरी इजी लेकिन जब आप रैंडम पेपर में ये चीज पढ़ोगे ना तब वहां पे ये चीज कंफ्यूजिंग हो जाती है सो दैट इज वट आई वॉन्ट यू टू फोकस ऑन दैट लर्न वन सब्जेक्ट फिनिश इट ऑफ ताकि नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट पे जब आप जाओ तो प्रीवियस को रिवाइज करके और उसको फिर से आप आगे यूज कर पाओ तो सो दैट यू कैन रिवाइज ऑल द रूल्स with uh, you know within a short span of time that is the question here so it should be not was it should be were absolutely correct uh, praveen aise nahi hota hame error dhoondna hota hai sentence badalna nahi hota theek hai error detection hota hai wahan pe sentence correction nahi diya hota to dono mein farak samjho praveen kya hai theek hai agar mu to main more than 5 soldiers kar deta more than 100 soldiers kar deta kar to main kuch bhi sakta hu point is wo option nahi hai na aapke paas wahan pe aapko error detect karna hai given sentence mein usko modify karke theek nahi karna samajh rahe ho praveen agar aap ye keh rahe ho sir more than 1 hota to soldier hota more than 2 hota fir soldiers aata hai bilkul theek hai more matlab ek se zyada hota fir to soldiers aata hi yaar wo to obvious hi baat hai more than 100 soldiers more than 500 1000 soldiers are ready on the russian uh, russian ukraine uh, russia ukraine border right आगे मत करो महेंद्र पढ़ने तो दो चलो इस क्वेश्चन नंबर एट पे चलते हैं थ्री विप्रो इंप्लॉई वॉज अमंग एट इंडियंस एंड ब्रिटिश इंडियंस किल्ड इन अ डेडली एक्सीडेंट ऑन अ हाईवे इन सदर्न इंग्लैंड यस गाइस इसमें दो गलतियां हैं लेट्स सी हु कैन फाइंड आउट बोथ द मिस्टेक्स नहीं नहीं सॉरी ये तो कोई जरूरत नहीं है महेंद्र आई एम जस्ट सेंग सभी के साथ चलते ना मजा वहां पर आएगा वेरी गुड नेक था उत्तम एक और गलती थी ये yes. सबसे पहले तो वेरी गुड चितांशु अब सही ऑब्जर्वेंस पे आ गए हो आप कॉन्शियस ऑब्जर्वेंस कर रहे हो वेरी गुड रोशन दो गलतियां हैं इसमें सबसे पहला थ्री है तो अब हमें पता है देखो थ्री आ गया तो इंप्लॉय नहीं क्या होना चाहिए था इट शुड हैव बीन इंप्लॉज तो थ्री विप्रो इंप्लॉज और अगर इंप्लॉज प्लूरल है तो वर्ब क्या होनी चाहिए प्लूरल तो थ्री विप्रो इंप्लॉज वर अमंग एट इंडियंस एंड ब्रिटिश इंडियंस Killed in a deadly accident on a highway in southern England. Very well done, Roshan. Very good, Mahendra. Chalo, question number nine. Let's go, guys. Earlier, India announced that both sides maintain diplomatic communication, and during these exchanges, New Delhi were able to express its views and convey its concerns and interests. Is me bhi do galtiyan hai. Dekhte hain kaun dono galtiyan dhoon paega. Yes, guys. Let's see if you are able to figure out both the mistakes. earlier india announced that both side maintain diplomatic communication and during these exchanges new delhi were able to express its views and convey its concerns and interests very good nekta very good roshan very good mahendra very well done guys so earlier india announced that both means two right so two cannot be singular it should have been both sides maintain diplomatic communication and during these exchanges new delhi not were new delhi was able to express its views and convey its concerns and interests very well done guys keep up the good work guys now you are understanding the importance of this topic and how they may present questions to you let's read next question guys in recent weeks uh, india and china has maintained diplomatic communication in regards to incident at doklam 
yes guys in respect of sorry isme bhi do galtiyan hain theek hai dekhte hain kaun dono galtiyan dhoond pata hai lekin subject verb agreement ki ek hi galti hai aur dusri galti main aapko bataunga very good praveen thoda aage aa jao hum next question pe aa gaye hain question number 10 pe yes guys no 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 Let's see who is prepared. Have maintained तो सबको पता लग गया नहीं इन रिसेंट वीक्स हो सकता है वीक्स में कोई गलती नहीं है रोशन पिछले हफ्तों में पिछले कुछ समय में बोलते ना इन रिसेंट वीक्स गलती यहाँ पे क्या थी वो सुनना नो सिद्धार्थ पहली गलती थी इन रिसेंट वीक्स इंडिया इन चाइना हैव की जगह क्या आना चाहिए था गाइस हैज की जगह क्या आना चाहिए था हैव आना चाहिए था बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टू कंट्रीज राइट Very good, Uttam. So in recent weeks, India and China have maintained diplomatic com uh, communication. अब ये याद रखना, guys. In respect of नहीं होता. W R T पढ़ा है ना? With respect to होता है. So अब ये वैसे subject verb agreement की गलती नहीं थी. But still, you should have understood कि यार हाँ W R T पढ़ा है हमने. So with respect to होता है. In respect of नहीं होता. So in recent weeks, India and China have maintained diplomatic communication with respect. टू इंसिडेंट एट डोकलाम वेरी गुड उत्तम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू होता है इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ नहीं होता विद रिस्पेक्ट टू होता है डब्ल्यू आर टी पढ़ा है सभी ने शॉर्ट फॉर्म में लिखा होता है डब्ल्यू आर टी डब्ल्यू आर टी स्टैंड फॉर विद विद रिस्पेक्ट टू तो दैट वॉज द एर हेयर ऑल राइट ये चलो मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन अब देखते हैं आपने सही कंसेप्ट सीखे हैं या नहीं सीखे हैं नॉट ओनली द पैसेंजर हैव बीन सिवियरली अफेक्टेड लिविंग ओवर 8000 थाउजेंड कम्यूटर्स स्टैंडर्ड बट ऑन गोइंग कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी हैज ऑल्सो टेकन इट्स टॉल ऑन वैल्यूएबल रियल प्रॉपर्टी लेट्स सी हु विल बी एबल टू फिगर आउट द राइट क्वेश्चन Roshan says has been. Chitanshu says has. Uh, Salma says has. Uttam says has. But also, very good Uttam. अब इसमें भी दो गलतियाँ थीं. लेकिन Uttam आपने एक तो ठीक कर ली. दूसरी गलत थी. Very good Mahindra. Guys, ध्यान से पढ़ो. क्या कह रहा है वो? Not only the, हमने passenger देख के बस has been कर दिया. लेकिन आगे नहीं पढ़ा. ध्यान से पढ़ो. Guys, क्या बोल रहा है? Not only the passenger have been severely affected, leaving over. 8000 कम्यूटर्स के सिर्फ एक पैसेंजर अफेक्ट हुआ है 8000 में से कि नॉट ओनली द पैसेंजर हैव बीन सिवियरली अफेक्टेड लिविंग 8000 कम्यूटर्स स्टैंडर्ड बट ऑन गोइंग कंट्रोवर्सी हैज आल्सो टेकन इट्स टॉल तो पहली गलती है गाइस हम ये भी समझना पड़ेगा अगर वो प्लूरल की बात कर रहे हैं कि भाई ट्रेन रुकने से 8000 यात्री खड़े रह गए और रेल प्रॉपर्टी को भी नुकसान हुआ तो गाइज हम ये भी समझना है कि अगर कंटेक्स्ट में अगर हमें ये पता लग रहा है कि वर्ब ठीक है लेकिन सब्जेक्ट गलत है तो गलती सब्जेक्ट में भी मानी जा सकती है ये याद रखना गाइज नॉट ओनली द पैसेंजर्स होना चाहिए था यहाँ पे नॉट ओनली द पैसेंजर्स हैव बीन सिवियरली अफेक्टेड लिविंग ओवर एट कम्यूटर्स स्टैंडर्ड और दूसरी गलती थी हमें ये पता होना चाहिए नॉट ओनली के साथ क्या आता है हमेशा बट ऑल्सो बट नहीं आता सिर्फ बट ऑल्सो आता है सो नॉट ओनली द पैसेंजर्स हैव बीन सिवियरली अफेक्टेड लिविंग ओवर एट थाउजेंड कम्यूटर स्टैंडर्ड बट ऑल्सो ऑन गोइंग कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी हैज टेकन इट्स टॉल ऑन वैल्यूएबल रियल प्रॉपर्टी दैट वॉज द करेक्ट करेक्शन हेयर वेरी गुड महेंद्र सो गई समझ आया क्लियर हुआ सर हाँ सर हमने तो जल्दी जल्दी में देख के ना हैव को हैज कर दिया बस पैसेंजर ही देखा आगे कुछ नहीं देखा बट ये मतलब वो हमारा काम सिर्फ उसको पढ़ना नहीं होना चाहिए गाइज आर एम शुड बी टू अंडरस्टैंड द सेंटेंस एंड टू फिगर आउट द राइट मिस्टेक वो ऐसे से भी कंफ्यूज करते हैं देखो उसको ये भी पता है कि बच्चे इतने दिनों से यही कर रहे हैं प्रैक्टिस तो उसको ये वो ये भी जानता है कि मैं कैसे उसको और तरीके से कंफ्यूज करता हूँ सो दैट इज हाउ ही यू नो ट्राइज टू कंफ्यूज यू इन द एग्जाम तो वो ध्यान से पढ़ के चलना है आपने गॉरेट गाइज चलो गाइज क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व पे चलते हैं द कमेटी वर सेटअप इन मे लास्ट ईयर बाय द देन डिफेंस मिनिस्टर मनोहर परिकर यस गाइज क्या गलती है इसमें वेरी वेल डन तैयार बैठे थे अपने आंसर टाइप करके सभी ना वेरी गुड महेंद्र वेरी गुड इंदु स्वर्णिम वेरी वेल डन वेरी गुड रोशन वेरी गुड नेक्ता वेरी गुड उत्तम वेरी गुड सिद्धार्थ वेरी वेल डन गाइज 
सो क्या होना चाहिए यहाँ पे था कमेटी कमेटी बींग सिंगुलर एक 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 वो होता ना एक एंटिटी है कमेटी तो वर्क कैसे आ जाएगा द कमेटी वॉज सेट अप इन मे लास्ट ईयर बाय द देन डिफेंस मिनिस्टर अब ये द देन क्या होता है पता है उस वक्त जो डिफेंस मिनिस्टर थे मनोहर परिकर उस वक्त द देन का मतलब क्या होता है उस वक्त जो डिफेंस मिनिस्टर थे मनोहर परिकर उनके द्वारा ये कमेटी सेटअप की गई थी उस टाइम वेरी गुड रोशन सो द कमेटी वॉज सेटअप इन मे लास्ट ईयर बाय द देन डिफेंस मिनिस्टर मनोहर परिकर करेक्ट तो ऐसे बहुत बार यूज होता है एग्जाम में इसको ध्यान से करना कई बार बच्चा ना इसको गलत कराता है ठीक है कैसा दो दिन कैसे हो सकता है लेकिन दो दिन का मतलब होता है उस वक्त जो डिफेंस मिनिस्टर रहे उनकी बात हो रही है यहाँ पे चलो गई नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पे चलते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन द डीएनए सैंपल्स ऑफ एट पर्सन कलेक्टेड इनिशियली बाय द पुलिस हैज नॉट मैच विद द फोरेंसिक एविडेंस ऑफ कल्प्रिट गैदर्ड फ्रॉम द क्राइम सीन यस गाइज what should be the uh, what is the error here have not very good very good observance guys the dna samples of eight persons collected sabse pehla subject kya hai samples ki baat ho rahi hai guys the dna samples of eight persons collected initially by the police has not matched or have not matched with the forensic evidence of culprits gathered from the crime scene so samples being plural we have to ab bachcha kehta hai nearest ko dekhta hai maine kaha tha na wo kaise confuse karega सर पुलिस के साथ तो हैज ही होना चाहिए ना बट पॉइंट क्या है पुलिस सब्जेक्ट नहीं है सब्जेक्ट क्या है यहाँ पे सैंपल्स सो द डीएनए सैंपल्स ऑफ एट पर्सन कलेक्टेड इनिशियली बाय द पुलिस यहाँ पे क्या आना चाहिए हैज नॉट और हैव नॉट हैव नॉट मैच्ड विद द फोरेंसिक एविडेंस ऑफ कल्प्रिट्स गैदर्ड फ्रॉम द क्राइम सीन वेरी वेल डन गाइज हैड नॉट नहीं नहीं हैव नॉट जो उसने पहले कलेक्ट किए थे वो मैच नहीं हुए हैं बात तो अब की कर रहे हैं ना हैड नॉट नहीं हैव आएगा महेंद्र The DNA samples of eight persons collected initially. Initially मतलब जो शुरुआत में कलेक्ट किए गए थे पुलिस के द्वारा मैच उनको किया गया और अब क्या पता लग रहा है Had not matched or have not matched. तो have not आएगा had not नहीं आएगा Got it? चलो गए क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन पे चलते हैं The case may put the government in an awkward position if the CBI succeed in exposing the alleged conspirators. Very good Purvi. Ready with the answer. Very good. Uh, the case may put the government in an awkward position if the CBI succeed in exposing the alleged conspirators. Yes, guys, what should be the correct answer here? What is the erroneous part? Very well done, Chitanshu. Very good, Siddharth. Very good, uh, Diana. Very good, Swarnam. Very good, Uttam. सीबीआई की वजह से वेरी गुड चेतांशु नाउ यू आर स्टार्टिंग टू ऑब्जर्व द सब्जेक्ट देखो पहले दो क्लॉजेस थे इसमें द केस मे पुट ये हो गए थे एक वर्ब द केस मे पुट द गवर्नमेंट इन एन ऑकवर्ड पोजिशन इफ अब इफ के बाद नया क्लॉज शुरू हुआ इफ द सीबीआई नाउ सीबीआई बींग सिंगुलर सिंगुलर के लिए हमें क्या करना पड़ेगा वी हैव टू यूज अ सिंगुलर verb so it should be not succeed it should be succeeds very good mahindra so the case may put the government in an awkward position if the cbi succeeds in exposing the alleged conspirators right moving on guys question number 15 uh shuru kare yes guys the high court's observations show that the uh, the action of the government were in clear violation of its direction yes guys what is the erroneous part here the high court's observations show that the action of the government were in clear violation of its direction and nahi roshan shows nahi aayega observations hai dhyan se dekho very good diana the action was very well done very good mahindra see again there are two clauses the high court's observations observations is singular so for singular we have to uh, sorry plural so for plural we have to use a plural verb so the high court's observation subject here is observations so the high court's observations show that now after that there's a new clause that the action of the government don't uh, government is not the subject action is the subject and action being singular will take a singular verb so that is how he tries to confuse you okay and that is what you have to look forward to very good swarnim very good chitanshu very good siddharth very good uttam uh very good uh, daina very good swarnim very good indu roshan clear ho gaya chitanshu pehle galti kar di thi humne right but don't worry you know uh 
All right. Good job. Good job. Chalo, guys. Uh, last five questions for today. Yes, guys. So quickly, question number six. Now let's see if we are able to up, uh, able to solve them. Question number 16. I'll read out to you. The Supreme Court today directed the Sikkim government to maintain status quo. Status quo means basically to stay as it is, right? Don't make any changes. Don't implement any more action. So that is called status quo. So the Supreme Court today directed the Sikkim government to maintain status quo at a place which were under threat of demolition from the state authorities, which wanted to renovate it. Now you are exactly, now you are doing it well. Now, look, these kind of questions, these kind of languages you get in the exam. We get confused when we look at the language, we get scared. But the question is the answer, I mean, the error or the answer is simple. So how do you make the language? If you clear the concepts properly, you will be able to finally crack it down. And that is our aim. Right? So the Supreme Court today directed the Sikkim government to maintain status quo at a place now when we are talking about a place we should not use were here it should be was at a place which was under threat of demolition from the state authorities which wanted to renovate it got it very well done guys good job Chalo, question number 17 pe chalte though educational institutions was open for the past two days only around 20, 12 percent students were present ये ऑब्जर्वेंस अच्छी है लेकिन इसको जब कंटिन्यू करोगे ना तभी ये टॉपिक क्लियर होगा गाइस मतलब याद होगा आज हमने पढ़ लिया हमें लग रहा है सही हो रहा है सब कुछ लेकिन 10 डेज डाउन द लाइन अगर हमने इसको रिवाइज नहीं किया और इसको एग्जीक्यूट मतलब यूज नहीं किया अपनी डे टू डे लाइफ में आप भूल जाओगे ये चीज तो आज ऑब्जर्वेंस जो सीखी है उसको कल यूज करना है आपने करेक्ट नो इंदु ध्यान से देखो एक ही गलती है इसमें दो एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस so institutions are plural, so what was the place where was it? Were. Though educational institutions were open for the past two days, only around 12% students were present. Students were absolutely fine, students was not going to be. So what did I say? In the fraction, in the percentage, we were 12... Do you remember this rule I told you? Yes, in the fraction. Do you remember? No, sorry, in the fraction, I'm not saying this. This is some, all, none. Where did it go? Yes, some. All, none, part, majority, remainder, percentage, fraction. I told you, one third of the population is, but one third of the, uh, of the citizens are. So, the noun depends on the verb. When there are students, it students on the students. If there is 12% area, then 12% area was. But if students, then what will Were. So this is absolutely correct. The only error here was you should have used were here. Got it? Very well done, guys. Otherwise, you know, otherwise we don't need this, right? Chalo, guys, moving on to the next question. Uh, the bench have agreed to hear the center's plea. Moving on to the next question. The bench have agreed to hear the center's plea. Sorry. The bench have agreed to hear uh, the center's plea to transfer petitions against RERA pending in various high courts. I think this is a very simple one today. The bench were opened. No, no, no. It is not a past tense. It should not be were opened, Mahindra. Were opened is used for an uh, for an passive sentence. Just say we opened the door. The door the door was opened by us. But was open here means it was functioning, functioning, right? It was uh, the you know the daily office work was going on. That is what we mean that the show is open or the, the, the theater is open, the door is open. Got it? Not open. Yes, guys. So the clearly uh, here we should have used has in place of have. The bench basically means the team. So the bench has agreed to hear the center's plea to transfer petitions against RERA pending in various high courts. Got it? All right, guys. Very well done. Moving to question number 19. While... Um, Three major rivulets played their planned role. The flooding was because drainage networks in the city has disappeared. Yes, guys. While the three major rivulets, rivulets hota hai, uh, jo जिसको हम बोलते हैं तो कि पाइप सी होती हैं देखा पत्थर की पाइप जहाँ से सीवेज का पानी निकलता है। While the three major rivulets played their planned role, the flooding was because drainage networks in the city has disappeared. 
very good uh, networks have very good praveen no why it see we are talking about three so three rivulets so we'll have to use uh, uh, we'll have to use there for plural we use there not it so while three major rivulets played their planned role the flooding was because drainages networks in the city have disappeared that was the correct answer very good chitanshu uttam so now you've understood how to figure out answers in subject verb agreement and last question for today guys the development act has been generally respected but the second act have been both ignored as well as sometimes abused by the very two states yes guys the development act has been generally respected but the second act have been both ignored as well as sometimes abused by the very two states yes guys very good chitanshu swarnam dayana very well done see that's how you look at the sentences and find out the mistake the development act has this is absolutely correct according to act right then moving further has been generally respected but now the next clause begins the second act now this is singular here so we should have used has in place of have here but the second act has been both ignored as well as sometimes abused by the very two states so guys i hope you have understood what subject verb agreement means how to figure out how to understand the uh, questions how to figure out the verbs so guys do you have any doubt in this topic any question any any query uh, regarding what we learned today ha bilkul chitanshu puchiye whatever question you want to ask please ask <coughs> drainages networks why not drainage networks bhi hota hai drainages networks bhi hota hai dekho drainage uh, basically means flow of uh, you know sewage water drainages basically means the pipelines that have been laid out in the city so drainages networks is also correct thank you mahindra thank you so much and do uh, come again to uh, visit these sessions they'll be very helpful for your preparation sentence rearrangement aage ja ke hogi pratik in this course but this course uh, is only for the students uh, those who have enrolled in the rbi assistant batch so uh, if you want to if you are preparing for rbi uh, uh, assistant you can join our batch and you can get these sessions on one on one basis all right mahindra thank you so much two and two सितांशु चाहिए क्वेश्चन था टू एंड टू मेक फोर होगा मेक्स नहीं होगा क्यों देखो एंड आ रहा है ना ठीक है अगर सितांशु यहाँ पे एंड की जगह पे अगर आपने प्लस लिखा होता ना आई ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू देखो हमने क्या देखा था टू नाउन्स को जोड़ने की एबिलिटी और प्लूरल बनाने की एबिलिटी सिर्फ किसके पास होती है एंड के पास अगर यहाँ पे होता टू प्लस टू या अगर यहाँ पे होता टू इंटू टू अगर ये होता ना तो हम क्या यूज करते मेक्स क्योंकि दो कंजंक्शन जुड़े नहीं है मतलब दो नाउन जुड़े नहीं है क्योंकि एंड नहीं है वहां पे लेकिन अगर उसने एंड यूज कर दिया है ना दैट मीन ही टॉकिंग अबाउट टू डिफरेंट एंटिटीज टूगेदर तो फिर हमें क्या यूज करना पड़ेगा टू प्लस सॉरी टू एंड टू अगर वहां पे एंड दिया हुआ है तो वी विल हैव टू कंसिडर इट एज प्लूरल तब यहां पर क्या आएगा टू एंड टू मेक फोर यस पेड बेच पेड बैच है प्रतीक uh, this is a batch for uh, rbi assistant students students who are preparing for rbi assistant we can bhi hum karenge uttam don't worry uh, we will slowly and gradually we will cover each and everything we can based questions bhi hum discuss karne wale hain in sessions mein yes shitanshu we will cover vocabulary kaise cover karna hai important words kahan se hai kaise kaise questions aate hain we will cover all that in this uh, series in this batch so that will be available to you theek hai tabhi hum ek ek karke sessions le rahe hain ab sab mix up kar dunga to sab khichdi ho jayega ek din mein ye padhaun ya wo padhaun theek hai uh, what enough uh, uh, see this is the concept and some practice questions now in your course you have sectional tests right now go to those sectional tests go to those uh, subject topic wise questions and you can find many questions online as well just type subject verb agreement exercises you will find so many exercises online as well as there are many exercises given in your course as well so go practice them and judge yourself then you figure out that where am i making mistake and you can ask me any doubts and any queries that you come across right 
Yes, uh, this is absolutely correct, Mahindra, because MD and CEO can be the same person. So if we use only one article before both the nouns, that means we are referring to two different positions, but the person is same. For example, the vice principal and uh, and uh, vice principal physics teacher bhi hota hai na? So agar main aise bolu, the vice principal and physics teacher of the school has left. So if you use only one article, it is singular. But if I had used the vice principal and the physics teacher, then it would be have left. So this article ka game. If you use two articles, dono pe article use ho rahe hai, to plural. If you use one article, it will be singular. I will do this in the articles. This rule and we have to follow it very carefully. Got it, Mahindra? Uh, first topic concept uh, subject verb agreement hi hai. Pehle to basic to wo hai. understanding of your parts of speech and the, today is the first day of this course Aaj first topic kiya hai humne iska. Hai? Iske alawa, basics to aapko pata hona we are starting with grammar Aaj first topic tha, subject verb agreement then tomorrow we'll be covering tenses and verbs which is a very important uh, topic uh, considering your exam Two determinant plural verb. Very good, Chitanshu. Chalo, guys. So uh, that is that was it for today. So, guys, I hope uh, you found it useful. You found it uh, beneficial for your preparation for your journey. So, I hope this will help you in your exam and keep on practicing. See, this is not just enough. This is only the scratch. This is only uh, where we started. Now, the the more you will practice, the more observations you will go through in your day-to-day uh, -day life, the more questions you will practice, the better your attempt will be. Got it, guys? So, thank you so much for joining in once again, guys. Uh, keep up the good work and I'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, same time, 5 p.m. with another topic, which is very important. Uh, so, guys... Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy learning to all of you guys.